Right, well, I'm going to work on this Heathkit IC tester. I've had this sitting here for a couple of months now, and I really need to get rid of it so I can get some space in this room. It's getting a bit clogged and crowded. So I need to do a refurb on this thing. It needs a lot of work. I haven't even powered it up yet. This is basically exactly how it came. I don't even know if it works, but no idea. It's got the wrong plug on it, that sort of stuff. I need to rewire the mains cable. It needs a new cable on the back here. It's got a switch on the back for mains voltage, so I've already switched it over to make sure I don't forget. But basically, you put an IC in here, and it's called a 7400 because it actually originally came with a 7400 IC. And it's got this ZIF socket, which is a bit of a strange one. Right? That's kind of pulled up, and it sort of... Yeah, it's a bit of a strange socket. It kind of pulls up like that. That does move very smoothly now, and then you push it down to actually lock the pins together. It's a bit of a strange setup. Um, I might need to see if I can maybe put some silicon or something in there to help that slide. It just feels really tight. But each channel is basically a pin, and all exactly the same. So we've got off state here, and you've got on this switch, so there's off, that step which is using this button at the top here, and 5 volts. That's if you're using that side. If you're using this side, We've got ground, so we've got ground, ground, and gas discharge, which is a little bit different. So basically, if you have it there, you can leave it in that position and switch between five volts and ground by switching that over like that. I believe. I think I've got that right. We've also got these high voltage connections here. I don't know the stories with them. Power switch, and there's a voltage selection switch just here, which is between five and three point six volts depending on the type of chip you're testing. So, interesting device. What number is this? I can't really read that too well. I'll read the serial number. I think it's 04950. Alright. No bugs flying out of me, that's always a good thing. No signs of cockroaches, that's always a good thing too. <laughs> you never quite know what you're going to find inside things when you buy them offline. So, we have obviously individual circuit boards for each switch section. We've got some rear sisters across the indicators. And we've got a few capacitors in the back here which are going to be really easy to replace because it's the way it's been done. So that's excellent. We've got some of these old resistors here. They will need checking to make sure the values aren't too bad. We've also got some newer ones which actually look fine. So it's actually looking pretty straightforward. This should be a nice easy refurb. Excellent. Right, let's test these capacitors out. Let's see what we get. Although, I'm going to replace them anyway. 13.2 microfarad, 3.2 ohms. 10 microfarad, 250 volt. Let's try this one out. A thousand microfarad, 0.2 ohms. Well, the resistance on this one was bad. Let's check this one out. A thousand microfarad, 1.42, so that's looking a bit worse. As soon as the same caps, that's quite a big difference. Let me check this one. Come on. Get onto it. That's a microfarad point eight. So I think these two are the bad ones, basically. But I see what I've got in stock. That's the 350 volt. I'm not sure if we've got any high voltage axials like that. I'll have to see. But I mean, these are 25 volt, 500 microfarad. So I've actually got to replace those four seventies. And this one here is a 1000 microfarad, 15 volt. So, not too bad. Should be straightforward enough. I'll see what I've got. Alright, let's try and get some of these capacitors out. So this is the first one I'm going to take out. It's going to go down. Go anti-clockwise, I think. See if we can get these out now. The problem is these are wrapped connections, so they're likely to be hard to get out, if not impossible. But I'm just going to give it a go first, see if I can get anywhere with it. Might get lucky. Actually, let's just get my fan going. Put some fresh solder on. And I'm using a massive tip here because of the size of these connections. Large thermal mass. That is... Yeah, that's definitely wrapped. But I can see the end of it, so it might be a chance to get that one off. Let's 
This is a very stiff lead as well. That's the whole thing. Sit it moving around there. My poor tweezers. There we go. Got it. I'll put that capacitor back on again. Right. That was a challenge. But now that one end's off, I should be able to get the other end out easier. There we go. So that is the 10 microfarad 350 volt. And I actually have a 10 microfarad 450 volt sitting right here. I've got all these parts in stock. I'm going to try and shove these to the wire wraps as well, so this could be a bit interesting. But uh, we'll give it a go. Yeah, that's free through there, excellent. So that's floating through the hole, which is perfect, it means I can try and get the other one in. That is where it went, wasn't it? Right there. I hope so. So I put this so I can actually read the values as well. So I'll try and put it like that. This capacitor here needs sorting out. Be fine. Let's just do that with it. Let's make it hard for the next person, why not? Big blob of solder, but then you need that on these wire wrap things, otherwise they tend to break free. Right, that's one capacitor done. I'll repeat that for the other three. I don't need to record the whole thing, do I? So I'm just going to measure the resistor, which is here. Got a couple of resistors, which I need to check for. These older style ones, these do go off value with age. Just in here, these two. Those need checking. So I just need to measure that to make sure that it makes sense. What we've got here 23k band markings are red, violet, orange. So I think that's probably fine because it's reading a lower value, which means it's probably got some other circuitry bypassing. So this tab goes down to the regulator, which is down the back there. I don't even see it or not, but so um, it's connecting to that. So it's probably got some bypass through there. So let's measure this other resistor here and see what this one comes out as. Whilst I'm thinking about it, it's also measuring 23k. Hmm. Anyway, that's uh, brown, grey, orange. So that should be a 18k. Now that one's measuring higher, so that's not a good sign. I'll just pull out this leg of this resistor here and measured it out of connection so it's not actually in circuit anymore. It's only 1k above the value it's supposed to be, which is basically 27, it's reading 28, so that's a bit in spec, that's fine. I'm not worried about that. So I'm going to put that one back in again, and I can refit this capacitor. Hopefully. We should be good. If I get all this through. Yeah. Yeah. That one there definitely needs to be changed. So that's those capacitors replaced. Now, I've got to change this resistor. Now, unfortunately, the only one I've got is actually a lower wattage, I think. I'm not entirely sure. I think it's only half a watt instead of one watt. I'm not quite sure how that's going to go, but this resistor is no good, so that's what I'll come out anyway. I'll put the one in that I have, and we'll see if it gets too hot. If it gets hot, I'll have to figure out something else. You know, maybe make up something else, but um, we'll give it a try first, in case it's fine. So I picked up these little power cables off AliExpress a while ago, and they feel a little bit thin. They say 10 amps on this end, and they say 10 amps on this end, but I don't think it's a 10 amp cable really. Markings say 3 by 0.75, so yeah, maybe. That's what it says. What is it though? So I'm actually waiting to have a situation where I need to cut a power cord off to replace one on a piece of gear. So now I actually have a reason to cut one of these apart. So I'll cut the end of this, and we'll do a new mounting and stuff on here and find out how good this cable actually is. So, bye bye cable. Now we plug this end in. No, not yet. Obviously not. <laughs> you ever plug a mains cable, make sure it's not plugged in first. Otherwise you'll have a really, really bad day. 
maybe a bad several months after that if you've been unlucky. Anyway. So this actual this is like tearing. This insulation is not actually this is tearing really easy, it's not very good insulation. And the wires do seem thinner than I think they should be. I don't think that's 0.75. As I suspected, I don't think these are true statements on these. I mean, it is copper coloured. They're not steel wires, so it's actually twisting. Or aluminium, maybe. It could be aluminium still. But steel ones are four, which just don't twist. They just, they just keep popping back out. These might actually be copper. There is that in them. But I think these aren't 0.75. I think they're slightly smaller than that. I think they're slightly underrated. Which is kind of what I expected to be not quite what they say they are. Anyway, it's just a uh, solder these. Not soldering, so that's another good sign. They've had steel wires which don't solder before. <laughs> so they're kind of right. They just seem to be a little bit thinner than I think they should be. And the insulation on the outer doesn't seem as tough as it should be. Anyway, that's that. Let's pull this apart. So I followed the wires around and this side here which is switched goes through the fuse so I'm going to call that the live side. It goes to the transformer so I'm confident that I can just put the, the live or the hot wire whatever you want to call it to that side of that fuse and the neutral will come down to this switch leg here and that just goes to the transformer as well. This switch here is for the high voltage, 120 volt, 240 volt switching so that's what that's for, changing the winding connections on that transformer. So yeah I'm confident I can just go to that as a live hot wire earth goes straight to the chassis up here nice and easy so I'll take this off first I'm thinking maybe I do need to put the bigger tip back on here let's see how we go get it and flick the big blob of solder out let's get that off got that floating around in it that one, get the earth off over here. So the earth off, and then you've got to get the neutral off, which is from the switch, which means it's probably wrapped around the switch. We'll see. No, it's not excellent. Then you've got to get this gland out. So let's see if this gland tool is going to do the job. It may or may not. Yeah, it did it this time. I've had problems with this not fitting too well in some cases, so I think I actually want to modify this thing. And I'm pretty sure I can't reuse the same gland. I don't think it would be suitable for this cable. it's somewhat thicker. Let's have a look. I'd say yeah nah. <laughs> yeah nah. So get another cable gland. I've got some mess on me. That's where I find them. So I've got a cable gland which is just the right size. It's only barely good enough. It's slightly on the large side. I'll actually like about one millimeter smaller really. But it's gonna do the job I think. Now the problem is this gland is much bigger than the holes that I go into, so I need to make this hole bigger. For that I've got this reaming tool, just here. And I'm just going to stand this thing up on its back, or I'll probably stand it like that, probably. And then ream this out bigger with this tool. Make sure there's no wires or anything in the way of the hole, because there are some close to it, move those out of the way. Done a rip through the insulation. And then um, I'll just keep going with this until the gland fits in. You don't need to see me do that there. I don't know, maybe I'll do a little bit bigger. The problem is this will no longer be a keyed hole, it's just going to be a round hole when I do this. You can see the key's already gone. And basically I'll just keep doing that until this gland will fit. So what I'm doing now, because I'm getting close to the right size, I've actually started to elongate the hole. 
which with this reamer, all you do is basically stick at an angle like that. So you do that side, and then just turn it around this way and do this side. Obviously you've got to watch out about what's inside, make sure you're not reaming through something inside it when you're doing these big angles. But you have to make sure you're doing all this. And that will then create an elongated hole, which gives you a kind of keying to get this thing into. Now I'm really close to the right size now, so I think the elongation is about right, so I might actually now just do the middle bit again, because it's not quite wide enough in the middle. I'll just keep tweaking it until I get that to actually fit. So the other thing you can do is you get those rumor tools and you can also square the hole up a little bit like this just by doing those little corners where you want it to actually just grab it just to create a little bit more clearance. Okay, you can do it like that as well. When you get really close you can just do it with these little bits just to tune it and just take away a little bit of metal like that. Of course you could always use a file but you know that's also possible. So I've built this cable up to make it a little bit thicker here because I wasn't quite happy with the gland fit. It wasn't grabbing nicely enough so now I've built it up there should be a nice tight fit on there now and that won't be a problem I'll be much happier with that this will also double up a little bit I suppose as a uh, strain relief to a some extent so anyway we'll get this back in here Yeah, that's much better. That's not going anywhere. Happy with that. The other thing to do as well, if you want to be absolutely sure, you can put the cable tie around it as well on the inside. Do it up really tight so it's got even a bit more, which has to try and pull through before it starts pulling on the wires. It's probably a good thing to do. But these glands, once they're locked in well enough, they basically put the thing through like a little meandering path through the actual gland, so it actually forces it to tighten up more as it gets pulled. That's how they work. Anyway, we'll get this hooked up. Let's also check this fuse out and see what fuse actually is. Something else we should probably do. Anyway, can I thread that through the hole? Maybe I can. Yes, I can. Happy with that. Might put some fresh oil on this as well just to make sure it's going okay. Um, yeah, it definitely needs more solder on that. It's definitely nowhere near it. It's funny how the angle makes a big difference. Just ask your wife. Yeah. <coughs> oh, no, I've ruined it now. Well, let's just get some fresh solder on this, get this all plated up nicely. It's got a little edge where I actually had any solder on it. Come on. It's nicely to scrape. Shouldn't really use the tolling on it to do a scrape. No, it's starting to go now, that's right. Okay, happy with that. Made harder by trying to record video at the same time. I need to show what I'm doing. There's a slightly more awkward position than I would like to be. Come on, get in. That's through, let's fold it over a little bit. And make some fresh solder on. So now we've got to get the neutral on. which is potentially going to be a tricky one because of the switch. See if I can get it through there. Yeah. I think I need to pop this up. And push through. Here we go. It's through. Lovely. Push your first solder on that. So we're just about at the point where we can try it out. Uh, I suppose I should do some safety checks first, shouldn't I? Make sure it's not going to like short out and electrocute me or something. So let's power this up and see what happens. Nothing went bang. 
That's a good start. Turn the power on. We have an indicator over here already. Should there be? Maybe. Oh yeah. So we'll do 5 volts on all these. They should be on. 5 volts. Yep, okay, we can verify the indicators at least by doing that. Oh, we've got one which... oh no, it is on. Let's just be careful of the this. So you can probably see all those indicators. All the indicators light up. Power indicator lights up, but that's good. So that should go off. That one hasn't gone off. Might need to clean these switches. That's why I also struggled to turn on when I first got it going too. So I think the switches need cleaning. And it's also at 3.6 volts. Let's try 5 volts. Nothing to match. No difference to the brightness. So that's fine. Okay. Well that seems to be basically working in that state. We should try a chip. Right, so we set up here. I think we're ready to go. I've got a 74S00 IC in here. This is a 14 pin device, not 16 pin. So the bottom two pins aren't being used. I've set these switches up to allow for the device. So the outputs, because it's a quad two input NAND. So obviously the outputs from the NAND, you can't have those being pulled either way. So these are in the off state. So that's that one there. This one here. This one here. Here. Sorry, that one there. So that's the four outputs. This is the VCC line, which is going to 5 volts. And I've got all the other lines set to ground right now. So I can basically switch these switches here backwards and forwards to go between ground and 5 volts. And that will then hopefully enable the indicators on and off on each particular output. So you can use this to manually test a chip. So let's turn the power on. I've got it set to 5 volts. And there we go. So we can see. Maybe on camera? No, it's a bit hard to see. Let's turn some lights off. See it slightly better. Keep going. Yeah. There you go. Now you can see it. So it's going to be a bit dark. Anyway, so you can see the neons here. So obviously that one there is denoting that we've got a 5 volt input to the chip, so the VCC line. And those are the outputs. So if I switch these lines, these should turn on and off. So that's now high. That's high, that's now low. So that output is working correctly. And we'll do the same for this one. That turned off. That's fine. And the same for this one. That turned off. That's fine. And the same for this one. That turned off. Perfect, that chip works fine. So I'm just testing voltages across the chip. They should be doing five volts right now. We're getting 3.8 or so. And if we go down to 3.6 volt position, it's still 3.8. So we've got something going on with this switch, maybe. Oh, I saw it just then. There's something happening with a switch. I did see it flick to 5 volts just then. There we go. 4.2, I saw there. 4.7. So I think we've got a dodgy switch here. So what I might do now is stop, clean all the switches up with some deoxid, and see what happens. So, let's see if this thing goes bang. We've well, got dioxide everywhere. And we'll check this voltage again. Switches in all places. 5 volts. Ground, ground, floating. Ground, ground, floating. Uh, negative. Floating. Ground, ground, floating, ground, ground. Right, okay, all good. Now, is it going to go bang because it's got dioxide everywhere or not? What do you reckon? Turn it on. Go okay, on. Will it go bang? Alright. Still 3.8 volts. Might just in 3.6 volt position. Let's try that one. There we go, 5 volts. Let's check it again. Make sure it's not just a fluke. Still 5 volts, excellent. So it is working, although the 3.6 is actually 3.8. Also, the dial drop wasn't quite as much as I expected it to be. So, yeah, clean the switch has solved that problem. Ignore the flicking lights, it's because my probe's opening up the contacts on the chip in the ZIF socket. Sweet. That looks fine. 
So I'll just uh, use this one here, which is not currently being connected to anything. That pin's not being used on this chip, so I'm st I've still got the ground reference though. So ground reference is that pin. And on that one, I'm getting 80 volts DC. Without the side here, it says 60 volts. I'm getting 80, so yeah. I'll do that. Does that change anything? No, I close it. So, yep. So, it has to be in that selection to enable these to be 60 volts. I'm not quite sure why you'd want to do that, actually. Um, I don't know. Now, is that actually outputting what's on the IC pins? That's the next thing to look for. So, if I stick it on ground, we get the ground there. If I stick it over there, it is. So that is, these are direct connections to the IC pins. Lovely. Okay. In fact, I can probably verify that by doing a continuity test. Let's turn the power off. Check between there and there. Yep. Indeed, direct connection. So there we go. It's back together. It works. I'm super happy about that. This will be something which I use rarely, but from time to time it will come in useful. Actually, we'll need to pull this thing out and actually use it. So I'm actually really pleased that this is in a functional state. It was a pretty simple refurb, and there's basically nothing really wrong with it. Just basic, you know, dirt and age related stuff, you know. No real failures, so that's good. So check out the other videos at the end. Just later. Bye.